Hi, I'm Vita Clocky. You're in Vita's Collectibles Studio and joining me for my first fire of lilacs today. I'm going to be doing uh, first fire and this is what the second video will look like with second fire lilacs. So let me tell you about the colors and the supplies that I'll be using. These are the china painting colors I'll be using for lilacs today. I use a light lavender lilac. A second value would be pansy purple, medium value purple, and a rich violet or dark value purple. And I may use a little black to darken. A light, medium, and dark values of green, light moss, antique green, dark green and I will be using yellow in second fire. Rich brown for the branches. I may add a little blue violet in with my lilacs to give them a little blue look. And a second fire cool shadow. What I do is I'm, I grind my china paints with mineral oil which keeps them open. And I paint with my mixing medium or my China painting medium which is an open painting medium. I do a light brush cleaning and light wipe out with Turpinoid Natural. If I want a deeper cleaner wipe out I use an odorless mineral spirits that I keep covered. My tools, a scroller, a rounded flat shader, my edges are not real sharp on these. And a filbert brush, synthetic, which is rounded on the, the edges. That's synthetic. And for my leaves, I'll be using my Aquaflow flat square shaders. Plus a couple wipeout tools, a sharp one and the regular chiseled end. Now I've sketched on my piece a simplified version of the lilacs and that's what we'll be using today. What I'd like to start out with is on first fire I like to lay in a few branches in the leaves first so that I can lay my um, flowers over the top. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to lay in a few branches with my scroller brush, I'm going to take a little rich brown. And I'm going to connect that to the edge of this tile. Now these little branches would be a little narrower because they're they're smaller. I'm not going to worry about my lilacs yet. I think I've got all my little branches in so far. I always like to cut out on first fire a tiny bit of highlight so I don't lose the light. It's much easier to darken than it is to lighten. It's almost impossible once it's fired to go back and get your light back. So I've got my branches laid in. Next I'll do my leaves. I'm going to go in with light moss. I'm going to pull, pull, pull that color and wiggle that flat square shader and add a side load of antique green. I'll start with the leaf that's underneath. Pull towards the center, the center, the center. Reload, pull, 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 comma strokes all the way, and and add the tip. I'll do the same with the top leaf. C stroke, C stroke, C stroke to the vein, away from the vein. and a comma stroke. Now if I want to lay a little bit of a vein in, I can do that with the side of my brush. Now I'll lay these two in 
to the vein, to the vein. It's uh, get in, get out. Away from the way, vein, away from the vein. Comma, stroke towards you. Light moss, side load of antique. To the vein, to the vein, to the vein. Away, away, away. And comma, stroke. Now, let's look at these and go into the Turpanoid Natural and wipe out just a little bit of a highlight. Make sure that the viewer knows immediately which leaf is on top. And maybe we'll lay a little darker vein right in here. So we have that established for next time. These secondary leaves really don't have a lot of detail. Let's give this a more interesting outer shape. Now for the leaves in the front. If I were to look at these main leaves, I'd say this one I'll have to put in first because it's behind. I might stay out of the light moss green and go with the antique green, side load of darkest green. C strokes towards the center. Because this one is underneath, it can be a little bit darker. So it's a C stroke to the vein, C stroke away from the vein. Pull, pull, pull that color and then turn that tip towards you and do the comma stroke. That is why learning your C strokes, comma strokes, dash strokes are so important um, to build your way to um, painting and enjoying what you do. If you learn your basic brush strokes, you shouldn't have any trouble laying leaves in. There's your C stroke. Now I might stay a little lighter in the moss screen. Pull, pull, pull. Away, away, away. And tip it towards you and do that little comma stroke. And you can leave that highlight in there. That's perfectly fine. Because maybe I'll do a wash of lavender over that or another color later. It's, it's always good not to lose your highlights. Let's lay this leaf in with light moss, antique. Let's drop this in behind here first to get the darker value a little bit more under the flower. And we'll finish this edge. Lilac leaves are very elongated, narrow. They have a little bit of a heart shape to them. I'll lay a little vein there. Now I want to make sure I didn't lose any highlight here. So I'm going to go into my Turpanoid Natural and make sure I have a nice crisp highlight over the top of that other leaf. So the viewer knows immediately that this leaf is on top. Now, when I look at the lilacs, I'm thinking, okay, here's my prima donna. Here's my secondary. So I'm going to lay this in first. I'm going to take this soft-edged square shader. Use some conditioning oil. Wipe the majority of it out. I go into my lighter lilac and do a nice load front and back on that. Brush. I don't usually load front and back, but I do when I do lilacs because I want a nice uh, heavier load. I'm laying these little flowerettes in, trying to keep a nice interesting outer edge because at a glance, at a distance, if you were to view this flower, you should be able to tell that it is a lilac by its outer shape. And you notice I did lay color over that branch. That layering is so important. Rather than painting around things, like color by number, you want to overlap. Now, that's my light value. 
I'm going to go into my pansy purple, which is my medium value. And I'll continue making little flowerettes, turning my brush. I don't want to play too much, but I, I want to spend some time on my edges because they're very important. And I can leave little open areas because you can see through lilacs. They have little windows. So I, you can see I'm making a gradual change of values here from light to medium. I'm going to drop into a little of my darkest value, rich violet, and start merging the darkest color, which is the rich violet. And I'm going to watch those edges because I want them to be very prominent. I don't want to lose that little four petal flowerette, but I do want them to lay over this leaf. And this is a little boring here, so I might pull a couple interesting little flowerettes out here. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, I need to darken right in here because it's going to be under the prima donna. So I did add a tiny bit of black to my rich violet. I don't want to deaden it too much. I'm going to pull that out. And by making strokes different directions, you kind of give the illusion that those, those are little petals. So I'm going to go in and clean this brush with just my oil first and then a little bit of Turpenoid Natural. I'm going to start thinking flowerettes now. Light against dark. Most of the time they're four petals, but four petals don't always show. Sometimes only three petals will show, or two. You don't want to lose the dark that's behind because that's what's going to make your petal show up. Maybe I will just grab one petal here, one petal here, and most of your detail will be in your middle value areas. which is right through here. Now I get into the darker value areas, you don't see as much detail. Or as in your lighter va value areas, you don't see all that detail. So now I'm just going to do a soft oiled wipe out here to continue on. Maybe give this a little edge. But I'm wiping my brush often almost every petal, because I don't want to redistribute that that paint. I think the looser that you paint these, the better they look. Now I have a, that smaller synthetic Filbert. I'm going to clean that in odorless brush cleaner. And I'm just going to pick a few of these out. I'm pulling each petal to the center where I want more of a distinct crisp wipeout. If it looks a little flat in one value here, I might pull out a few here. One doesn't need to tell the whole story. We think we have to put in every tiny little bit of detail, but as an artist you need to think about letting the viewer imagine what might be there. Telling too much of the story is boring. I think 
we're at a stopping point. Now I'm going to pick my main flowerettes that are the lightest and push back a little center that I'll put yellow in next fire. I don't put yellow in the first fire because it's too contaminated next to the wet, wet purple. I may not put yellow in all these centers, but I like to add them so I can leave my options open. Now, let's look. Do I have an interesting outer edge? I think so. Do I have any windows? Not really. So I'm going to take my wipeout tool and carve out a few little windows because you can see through some of these clusters. I'll take my scroller, a little bit of green mixture, and do some tiny little stems just to give the illusion of some connection here. And then I can cover them again in another fire. All right, I'd say that lilac is pretty close to being done. I sometimes take my finer wipeout tool and I define a ridge like a little cup that makes that petal look like it has a little cup in it. It's just a little bit more interesting detail. You may not even notice it, but I think it just adds a little bit of extra interest, as long as you don't do too much of one thing. All right, let's go on with that square shader that's a little rounded at the edge. It isn't, it isn't a flat square one like my Aquaflows. Let's do the same thing here and let's mark our light source. To me, the light source is coming this way. 11 o'clock is what I usually do on most of my patterns. So the light's coming this way. The light's going to hit this lilac more on this side. So let's stay with our lighter value. My lavender lilac on that side. Start laying in interesting outer edge. I get to this point, I'm going to lay over that leaf, that layering thing again. can leave some little air holes here and there for some stems if I wish. If not, I can fill them in next time if I don't like the, where the openings are. Come on down a little bit more with the lavender. You see how I'm turning my brush this way, that way, just to give the illusion of petals. Let's switch to second value, medium value, pansy purple. Let's start merging that color in here. I usually paint on a, a turning wheel, which is very convenient for cluster flowers. I might go into a little blue violet now, just to change the color up on her a little bit. I'm 
I'm going to merge the pansy purple and the blue violet. smooth these out just a little bit, blend those colors. Maybe I need a little darker value up in here in order to get that contrast. I'm probably going to have to pump that up a little bit. I don't want any buildup because I don't want any chipping problems in the firing. awful close here. It's kind of smoothing out a few of those colors. Let's go in with a soft wipeout, which would be just a turpenoid cleaner. Let's see if we can shape a few little flowerettes. You want to keep some dark behind you, behind them, because you'll you'll lose your contrast and then you'll lose your form of your little flowerette petal. So jump around a little bit, loosen it up. Like I explained in some of my other videos, keep your wipeout towel here handy. I like to use the Viva or the shop, um, the blue shop rags, anything that's lint free. Because in porcelain art, lint is not our friend. It leaves specks in the firing. And when I approach this edge where it meets the other flower, I do want to stay a little bit lighter. Now let's go to the synthetic filbert and mineral spirits good and dry, and let's shape in the middle value areas a few very firm crisp flower Fs. Two or three you can, you know, you don't want to do a bunch of four petaled well that's actually what's on a flowerette of a lilac, but you don't want to show too much because then you get that reputation again and again and they look too much the same the same which is boring okay maybe I'll take a, just a little highlight out of here maybe out of here I'm getting very close to the end here Do I have windows of light? Well, let's check. Check that interesting outer edge. Did I leave some little windows for some stem work? Well, I'll cut a few here and there and see what happens. If I don't like them, I'll cover them up next time. I'll take green with my scroller now and add just a few little stem stem work here in those open areas. I could make them green, I could make them brown, I don't think it really matters. Now I'm going to pick out my flowerettes, a few of them, and clean back a few little centers. And they'll have yellow in on second fire. Take 
my fine wipe out now and find some little turn backs on a couple of those petals. They're just little U-shaped. That's where the, the edge of the petal folds back. I'm going to check my interesting outer edge. Let's give this a little curve here. Let's let some air in there. Always fill it in tomorrow or next fire, but if I lose it now, I'll never get it back. So I'm going to check where these go over the leaves. Make sure it's nice and crisp. So it's obvious that that petal goes over the leaf. I think at this point I might add some connection here. I have a few leaves that are hanging out by themselves. Let's give them some connection here up to that stem. And the stem looks a little boring so let's make it not so perfect. And then we can give it another shade of brown next time. And we'll clean up our edges and see what we have. I think we're at a good stopping point for first fire. I do like to fire my purples a little hotter. I would I like to let them mature to about an O uh, 15. Sometimes if I have the paint on quite heavy, I might even go to an 014 for first fire to really get that china paint to melt deep into the glaze. So I would take and fire this between 015 and 016. And the next fire then we'll, we'll add the detail. Thanks for joining me in Vitus Collectible Studio for my first fire on the lilacs today. Please stay tuned for the second fire which will look like this. Please subscribe and hit the bell button to receive an email so you don't miss my second fire on my lilacs. Thanks for joining me.